Good morning. My computer's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Give me one second. Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Saturday. Today is Saturday, December 9th. Starting off today, that was uh, still, 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 or still, still, still. Um, and that was the, um, sorry, the Cambridge, the Choir of King's College, the Choir of King's College, if you enjoyed that. Um, so I'm... I'm a little late today, I apologize. Um, but today we're gonna to be looking at um, Luke 10 and we're gonna be talking about trading worry for peace. Trading worry for peace. And we're continuing through our Embracing Advent series that I started uh, last week. So I'm glad you're with us. Let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Barbara and Ingrid. It's good to have both of you here this morning, praying for you. and and um, Daniel and Donna. I'm glad you're both here praying for you. Good morning, Andrea and Macon. I'm glad you're both here holding both of you in prayer and Jerry and Free, welcome. Praying for you this morning. Good morning, Susan and Michelle. It's good to have you here praying for you as well and Priscilla and Elsa. I'm glad you're both here praying for you today. 
And good morning, Genevieve and Cecilia and Admire. I'm glad you're all here as well. Praying for you, praying for each one of you as we begin our day together. So today we're going to be looking at Luke 10 verses 38 through 42. <clears throat> so I invite you to open up your Bibles as you're doing that. My name is Cindy Stauffer. Blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick and um, glad to be able to start the day off with all of you. So um, let's jump into this. Today's devotion is entitled Trade Worry for Peace. She says there is a story in the Bible in uh, of Jesus visiting the home of two sisters. So let's take a look at Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks so she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the greater part which will not be taken away from her. I am a Martha. Our devotion goes. Maybe I am too. And I have already admitted that I am an avid planner, overflowing with an abundance of ideas, just waiting to be put into action, particularly for a holiday or a birthday or for the sake of our purposes here, Christmas. My elaborate preparations during these weeks leading up to December 25th can bring a lot of joy, community, and gifts, along with unachievable expectations, sleep deprivation, and stress. It took me some years and tears to realize that I have a choice to make as I prepare for Christmas. I can, like Martha, be worried and bothered about providing so many things, or I can take the opportunity to sit and soak in the story once again of Jesus coming to the world in the form of a babe out of his great love for us. <clears throat> And here's the best part. By choosing not to worry and opting instead to meet with God in prayer, we are promised peace. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This verse encourages us to bring our worries to God in every situation. Whether you are concerned about the elaborate pre preparations you find yourself overseeing, or how you're going to afford Christmas gifts, or what the celebration will look like without someone you love at the table this year. Remember that nothing is too big or too small to take to God. Although we can feel pulled to plan and prepare and handle those things on our own, Jesus invites us to sit at his feet, to give our anxieties to him in prayer, and to let the overwhelming peace of God fill our hearts. As I continue to soak in this truth, I am learning not to get consumed with my plans, so, so consumed with my plans that I lose sight of their purpose. At the same time, I'm learning to embrace the planner in me. And I am increasingly confident that this is who God purposely made me. I still plan for parties and gather everyone for family movies and spend hours choosing 
the perfect gifts so that I can decoratively wrap them with love. But when those detailed preparations start to unravel and cause me to be worried and bothered and distracted from the goal of who we are celebrating, I will choose to find peace at Jesus' feet. This week, I invite you to do the same. While you may not be able to abandon all your plans and preparations, I encourage you to reflect on the purpose of your Christmas undertakings. Then, with a thankful heart, bring any anxieties you have to Jesus through prayer and let him give you peace. I love the story of Mary and Martha and you know, there's numerous books uh, about, we sh there's nothing wrong with Mar what Martha does. The problem with what Martha was doing was she was expecting Mary to do the same. Sometimes we need to sit at, at the feet of Jesus. Um, it is okay to be Martha's to plan and provide hospitality Jesus lifts up hospitality all the time. It's good to take care of people, to open your home, to, to prepare a meal for those that you love, to, to take time to care for one another, to pick out nice gifts or just, you know, do the things that make people feel welcomed. All of those things are good. It was not that Martha was doing anything bad in doing those things. The problem was, she was expecting everyone else to do the same and she was missing the point. So I understand that. There are definitely times where I feel as if I am running around and the things I'm doing are good, but I've lost the peace in the midst of them and that's not so good. And that is always the challenge is our heart in the right place? Are the things we are doing really for others or are they for recognition? Do we feel it as if we're doing all the work and, and we're better than those who are choosing something different? Or are we doing them because we have a heart that wants to serve, that wants to provide a safe, warm meal or whatever it is that we're doing? And so I want to encourage you in this season uh, to make sure that your heart is, is aligned with the things you're doing, that the things you're doing are uh, for, the, for a good reason, for the, the love you have for the people around you. And if you find yourself feeling anxious or um, worried, maybe it's time to sit at the feet of Jesus for a few moments to regroup, to remember. I love that she calls it soaking in the story, to soak in the story of Jesus, of God coming down to us in love. May it be for you in this season. Let us pray. God, we come today with lives that are full and busy, with expectations on ourselves and on the people around us. We come with our, with our anxieties and our fears and our past failures. We come in the need of rest. Help us to remember the real gift of Christmas. Show us ways that we can care for one another that are truly connected to the meaning of this time. Guide us in paths that are life-giving, not only for the people around us, Lord, but life-giving for ourselves as well, because that is what you desire for us. 
Help us to follow you, to find moments to be still with you, to care for those around us, but also to care for ourselves. Lead us this, this Christmas on paths that will draw us closer to you and closer to one another. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you um, tomorrow to come and join us as we move on in our to our second Sunday of Advent. And we're going to be talking about peace. What does it mean to be present with peace uh, in this season? We're going to continue on with our theme of being present. So I invite you. I know it's going to rain, but it's okay. It's good to gather. So I hope you can join us, uh, whether in person or uh, online tomorrow uh, for our second Sunday in Advent. And just a reminder that we will be doing our Advent study at 7 p.m. on Sunday as well. Uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 11. Um, God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.